Welcome, everybody. This is uh, Brian Moss with Tiger Sports Report, another uh, podcast a podcast edition of Behind Enemy Lines. This time we're going to uh, talk about Navy, and uh, we're going to bring in Mike James from the Navy site of Rivals. Um, Mike, how you doing? I'm doing all right. How are you doing, Brian? Not too bad. Uh, the, the name, as I brought you on, the name of the site escaped me. Is it Midreport? Yeah, that's right. Ah, that's right. So yeah, if you if you haven't checked it out yet, go midreport.com. Everything Navy for uh, for rivals. So, uh, but Mike, uh, let's just jump right into it. Uh, this is uh, Coach Newberry's first year. So, I guess my first question is, uh, from what you've seen, how does he differ from Coach Ken? Um, you know, from a, a leadership perspective, I don't know how how much you really can can say yet. Um, you know, obviously he's a defensive coach. His background is on defense, so so right off the bat, there's a, a little bit of difference there. Um, but but so far, you know, it's it's hard it's hard to tell. Um, you know, practices have been a little bit set up a little bit differently. Um, there's some some differences just when in how things are are being run. Like the the offense is going to use a tight end this year. Um, so they, they dabbled with it a little bit last year, but, but they actually have a position, a tight end position coach now. Um, so there are some little things here and there, but, um, overall, you know, in, in terms of, of temperament and in terms of, of, you know, emphasis on culture in terms of, um, just overall embracing the institution and, and everything that it means, it's actually he's actually uh, has a lot of the there are a lot of similarities. Gotcha. And, and from the uh, the Navy fan base, uh, how does they seem to catch on to Coach Newberry? Are they excited? Yeah, I would think so. I would I would call it cautious optimism. Um, mm -hmm. you know, for uh, they're very optimistic about him as coach. Um, I think if you know when the there was a little bit of grumbling that was happening last year, I think. Um, both, uh, but even, even as, you know, coach Nimatololo was on the hot seat, the one thing that was kind of consistent, whether you're talking about boosters or fans or whoever is we have to keep coach Newberry, have to find a way to keep him. Now, whether that was as defensive coordinator or as uh, head coach, you know, I, I think the important thing was that he just had to stay part of the program because I mean, Coach Niamatololo brought him on for a reason, you know, and, and when you talk to Newberry about his background and, and when he coached at Kennesaw State, one of the things he, he said he really liked about building a program from the ground up like that was that right away you get to put your stamp on the culture and kind of define what, what, that, um, what that program is going to be about. And he has that, that – so you can see in that mentality and knowing what Coach Niamatololo was like, um, he brings a lot of the same things to the table. So I think, you know, there, there's optimism about him as coach, but in terms of the team, you know, who knows? Coming off a four and eight season, optimism, you can only be so, uh, <laughs> so optimistic. Yep. Uh, so let's go into this season. What does, because uh, I look at that schedule, that, that first game, Notre Dame, I don't, um, I'm not a Navy historian, but I don't remember Navy and Notre Dame playing this early, playing week one or week zero, I guess, the first game of the season. Uh, but what does success look like for you, for Navy? The, the success is really the same as as it's always been. you got to have a winning season, get to a bowl game, and, uh, and win the Commander Chiefs trophy. Um, that doesn't really change um, mm -hmm. because really at, at any point, the, the team should be good enough to do that. If you look at the players that are on the team now, um, these are this is the recruiting class that came in um, after the 2019 season when Navy won 11 games and, and won the Liberty Bowl. Um, so this was that was one of the, the highly regarded classes um, at the Naval Academy, and and they're they're seniors now. Um, so the talent, the, the feeling is that the talent is there, um, but there's you know, you haven't won in a couple seasons. There's, there's, you, you kind of have to learn to win again and kind of get, get mentally, just mentally be, become winners again. 
Um, so there's, you know, it's, there's, there's a lot to, there's, there's optimism, but, but there's a lot of work to be done, obviously. Yep. And who do you think, uh, uh, you can give me one on offense, one on defense, or just one player overall, but who do you think uh, will have a breakout year this year that maybe no one's talking about? Um, offensively, it's, it's actually tough to say because we're not completely sure what the offense is going to look like right now. Um, the, now I, I say that it's going to be an option offense. Um, that's, but everyone talks about, you know, what kind of wrinkles we're going to see to, to add on to, to the offense, to, to kind of help overcome some of the rule changes and some of the, the, the obstacles that, that the offense had the last couple of seasons. Um, I think uh, the breakout player might depend on what some of those wrinkles are. Um, if we see throwing a little bit more throwing, um, then maybe we can talk about receivers or quarterback situation. But I think the most likely to be the most consistent player is fullback Dabba Fofana. Um, he's returning starter from last year, um, really carried a lot of the load at, at the fullback position last year at, at a time when, when the offense could not get the ball outside. Um, the, off- the, 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 the option – the, the whole pitch game just wasn't there all last year because of the rule changes. Um, so to be able to carry that much of a load, um, knowing that everyone knew he was going to get the ball, I think says a lot to, to his ability. Um, so offensively, he's probably the safest bet. Now that quarterback is the big question because the old, the old saying that if you have two quarterbacks, you really have none. Well, at Navy, they got four quarterbacks, and they're all trying to fight for it for the the starting the starting position. And and the problem is the guy that was on top of the depth chart coming out of spring, um, he was in summer school, not practicing right now, so he his status is up in the air. Um, two guys who started games last year, they missed a lot of spring practice. Xavier Arline um, was banged up playing lacrosse, and and uh, Tyler Avatai had knee surgery. So they're back now, but they missed all spring, so they're a little bit behind. So you have one quarterback, Blake Horvath, who is, you know, probably he was he showed a lot in the spring, just his ability to run the ball and his ability to kind of master the offense. Um, so he's kind of I don't want to say starter by default, but he's the the one guy that's been able to practice both spring and fall. So he's kind of there. The hope is that someone will rise up and, and claim the position instead of having a battle for it, you know, all, all up until uh, the Notre Dame game. Um, no, no, also, okay. But de- defensively, I think you just got to look at the, the defensive line. All three guys are, are all three starters are back from last year. Um, Jacob Busick had six sacks last year, was second on the team in sacks. He's back. Um, they, they really set the table up front. And to allow guys like Colin Ramos, a linebacker, um, to be able to to move around and, and make plays around the field. So defensive line is, to me, without a doubt, the strength of the de- defense. Nice. Now, now Navy has, I mean, multiple, uh, you know, rivalries. You got, you know, obviously Air Force, uh, Notre Dame, Army. But in conference, who do Navy fans view as their natural rival? Would it be Temple, or since you know the the Memphis games have been pretty close you know or pretty exciting you know uh you know especially early on because the navy dominated i think the the memphis series early on in in the series you know who do they view as their conference rival i don't know if i can speak for navy fans because i think my view would be a little bit different than than some navy fans view Mm -hmm. Uh, to me it is memphis um especially when you look at not just the the success that navy had early on but just the stakes in each of those games, a lot of times, were big. Um, when when Navy's gone to Memphis, it's it's almost always been a prime time game, either Saturday night or Thursday night. Yeah. You know, both teams have been ranked when they've played at, at times. Um, there's there's always seems to be a lot on the line when Navy and Memphis play, and to me, that's that's been the 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 biggest of of, of the in conference rivalries. Um, Tulane was is is a historic rivalry for for Navy. Um, they played for for years, going back to the '40s. Kind of fell off the, the schedule um, in the late you know, 2000s, and then 
when Navy came back on, being back on the schedule, I think a lot of Navy fans are happy to see Tulane back on the, the, the schedule as well. And then Houston is always a big game um, whenever whenever they play, but obviously with with them gone, that's mm-hmm. um, you know Navy Navy had a couple of big wins, so I think they they kind of uh, look back on that series fondly. But of the 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 teams in the conference now, probably Memphis would be be top of the list. And how does uh, I guess the NIL era? How does that affect Navy? Is there NIL deals for Navy players? There, there isn't. Um, it's against Department of Defense rules. Um, but you know, it's it's kind of funny the way the kind of player that is drawn in by NIL probably wasn't coming to Naval Academy in the first place. Navy is really kind of a you get the guy that has that long vision, you know, they, the cliche is the four years versus 40 years, but that's very real at Navy. You got to look at that, that payoff on the back end and anyone who's, who was looking at getting a payoff, you know, in the short term over four years, probably wasn't looking at Annapolis in, in the first place. So it's, it doesn't help. I'm not going to pretend that it does, but it's not necessarily the, um, it's, it's not necessarily a, a deal breaker. And, you know, honestly, when it comes to things like the transfer portal, I think that actually helps Navy a little bit um, in a couple of ways. Uh, one, Navy, because Navy doesn't take players in from the portal, when they go out and, and recruit, they can tell guys, look, you come here, we're not going to go out and get a transfer to take your place. You know, we're committed to developing you. And so I, that resonates with guys. And then, you know, because a lot of teams are bringing in players from the transfer portal, there aren't as many spots for high schoolers to land. And so there are a lot of those guys are more willing to listen to the Naval Academy when, you know, before they might not have picked up the phone. So there's a little bit of give and take, you know, it, to be, to be honest, if it was up to me, I would, you know, as from a Navy perspective, it would be probably be better off without all, all these changes, but it's not the end of the world either way. And, if you play it right, you can actually play it to your advantage. All right. And when you take a look at uh, this year's AAC with the new teams coming in, uh, for those watching on uh, YouTube, I threw up the preseason poll. What, you know, what is your viewpoint of the new AAC? Do you think it will take a couple of years before it'll, you know, because you have the, you know, the Houston's and Cincinnati's, they left. So it's gonna make, it may take a year or two for someone to fill that role. What is your viewpoint on the teams coming into the American Conference? Well, I think coming into when when looking to replace all the the schools that have left, I think UAB was kind of the obvious choice that everyone had kind of picked out. I think just the nature of the school, they, they already had kind of that ambition that the the conference and and that investment in in both the school and the and athletics that the conference kind of expects kind of that standard they wanted to, to set so past uab um i think a lot of what you're looking at is um it, it's it, it's kind of a, a a growth thing so i think that the biggest surprise was that the the conference took so many schools but the more i think about it the more i think it makes sense when they look at how hard they went into texas We'll put it. We'll put it to you this way: um, If you look at, at Texas right right now, if you say most top recruits go to Texas and Texas A and M, that's like one A and one B, then the ne- that next tier, that next tier of recruits just went to the playoff and and just played in the championship game. You know, that's the TCU level. You know, and the at the rate Texas is growing you want to be part of that because if the way Texas is growing, if you get UTSA, you get North Texas, you get rice. um, If they make investments now as Texas is kind of exploding just demographically, um, then the potential is there for those to develop into, to, to pretty good programs. So um, it's a long-term play, obviously, although, I mean, UTSA is, is going to be competitive right away. Yeah. Um, so, you know, so, you know, they're, they're not waiting, <laughs> they're not waiting around to grow, but, but in general, you, with the, 
influx of money they have a little bit, I mean, a lot more than Conference USA to be able to grow and invest in those programs. You know, the the hope for the American is that 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 investment coupled with location and, you know, Florida is growing, too. So FAU, Charlotte as a city is growing. So that makes sense, too, in a way. They're all it's all done with the idea of if these because of where they're located, if you can invest in these places, they have the potential to grow. And so it's, it's, it's a, it's, you know, it's, it's no guarantee. Um, but that I think is the thinking of the conference. Yep. All right. Uh, Mike, definitely appreciate your time. Can't wait for the uh, season to start uh, for the folks that don't, uh, don't know where you're at. Uh, go ahead and uh, tell them, you know, your website again and where to find you on social. All right. The, uh, the website is uh, themidreport.com. Um, it's the Navy rival site and you can find us at the mid report or on Twitter at Navy bird dog. All right, Mike, I appreciate your time, man. Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right. That was uh, Mike James from uh, the mid report. He covers everything Navy for rivals. Uh, it's, it's, this will conclude our podcast for tonight. Uh, what, uh, What's coming up on Tiger Sports Report? We'll have uh, some practice reports. We'll also have more behind enemy lines. Uh, we're we're going to talk to uh, the folks at uh, USF pretty soon, and we'll have that up. If you're not a member of Tiger Sports Report, we you can get your first year for twenty five dollars. All you do is uh, use the promo code H one hundred for the Highland Hundred. That's a Highland Hundred promo. You don't have to be a Highland 100 member to get on this promo, but H100 uh, promo and you get your first year for $25. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.